Aloha, all of you regs and all of you shinies. It is Jackson from the 1313 Podcast, joined with Tommy from the 1313 Podcast. And unfortunately, we could not have Jacob with us today. He is working on a short film called The Voice of Men. And he it's just a whole lot of just like shooting production and whatnot. So he's really tied up with that. But he will be moving at the end of this week to go to Disney. So then we will have a true 1313 probably conglomerate of like everybody separated everywhere, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But I'm currently in Hawaii right now. Tommy's still in Erie. So he will still be representing Erie Gang. Hold it down. Holding it down. He's got his fancy collection in the back. We're still decorating the room here. So that's why it's a little bit bland right now. But that will be improved in the future. Also, apologies in advance if anybody hears any very obnoxiously loud vehicles. Um, that's going to be coming from my perspective because I live right by the highway and the weather is nice. So therefore, everyone with a loud, obnoxious vehicle must drive by my house. Um, yeah, I mean, so Jackson, what's new? How was the move, brother? Everything go good? Moving really good. Everything was pretty smooth, so can't complain about that at all. Uh, I actually just started a full-time position as an assistant manager at a sunglass hut here, so really stoked for that. Um, if people have been watching the show for a while, you would know that uh, Tommy, Jacob, and I all worked at a lens crafters location. So it's kind of the same stuff, but I mean, the difference between that and the store I'm working at now is it's like the highest tier of like luxury items. And I have to tell you this too, because I didn't get to tell you. So you know what Tom Ford is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the most expensive pair of sunglasses that we have are by Tom Ford and they're $17,000. Why are they $17,000? You may ask because they're made out of a water Buffalo. Are you serious? Yes. yes they found a water buffalo in quotations because apparently my manager was explaining to me they found a dead tiger and did like tiger glasses at one point but then it was actually found out that they poached the tiger so they got like a huge amount of trouble for that so we don't display the frame not only because it's expensive but because it's also potentially controversial so that, that's like a special item. If you want it, you're buying it like at the store and you're like saying it up on it. But it is so hilarious that that's like the most exp and that's like the most expensive thing by like leagues. Most expensive thing that you have on the shelf is like two thousand dollars for sunglasses. But yeah, I I'm sure you can probably hear it, but I don't know why the landscapers decided they were going to mow the lawn right now at six o'clock when usually they do it in the morning. Bro's got a Vanessa Marshall moment going on for him. Right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I guess just to jump right in, I'll grab one of our lovely, lovely banners that I made very last minute um, because we didn't know that we were going to do uh, the podcast sure. this way. So this is very last minute. So yeah, we're, we we're, were kind of relying on Jacob and his technological wisdom to do something different instead of StreamYard. But for this week, we have StreamYard. So... <laughs> Um, so Jackson, what else is new other than the move? Everything going? Um, yeah, everything's good. I'll grab it just because it's on the side over here. Uh, Star Wars stuff that I'm working on. I have my blaster with me. It broke into pieces. And so you'll probably, I'll try to show off bits and pieces here. So what I ended up doing was I had to take like a special glue and then I took like a two part epoxy to basically cement the scenes together. So now I have to go through all the scenes, kind of like repaint, rework it. But such as life, I guess that's what you get when you ship your stuff in the mail. So never ship anything important in the mail that you don't want to break because they'll play soccer with your package. But I am still waiting on my 501st armor. I couldn't bring it with me, unfortunately, because it was way too big and didn't fit weight and size parameters. But we found out a way how to kind of like cost effectively ship it to us. So I'm waiting on my dad and Commander Bly to help package that up for me. The people here in the 501st seem really, really cool. They want to meet me. So I'm really stoked for that because they have a bunch of events for the month of June. But other than that, I've been working on my Star Wars collection. It isn't going to be like a back here. It's in the living room that I have um, out there. But I purchased some like lightsaber stands on Etsy to display the Ezra saber that I got signed by Amon and Natasha. And looking forward to new Black Series stuff. I got the Droidica on me. Probably will be a review of that. 
it sucks because so Hawaii is on a six hour time difference. So when I wake up in the morning, it's already the afternoon where you guys are. And so it's by then, like, I immediately go on my phone when I wake up just because there's usually like a bunch of like Star Wars news because yeah. everything gets posted in the afternoon. But I know I haven't missed anything yet that I know of for action figure news because I keep following the group chats that you guys have. So hopefully we get some new stuff soon. I am excited. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, as far as my dude, the obnoxiously loud cars, man. I'm just gonna <laughs> bro, I'm gonna put road spikes right out on the road. Um, so uh, hang on. He's got to let it pass. Attack of the cars. See, when one of the last few days that I was in Erie, when we were waiting to move, there was like five to ten minutes worth of like just motorcycles driving past my place like in a gigantic line like as soon as the weather gets nice and eerie everyone has to bust out a really expensive car or their loudest motorcycle so that's probably what tommy's going through right now no dude it's these damn landscapers i don't know why <laughs> they chose at 6 p.m on a wednesday that they needed to landscape right in front of my house the tiny tiny patch of grass that's out front of my house. Like, really? You had to go over it twice? Are you serious? Anyways, um, I got engaged this past week, so that's Woo! super exciting. Dude. Um, so uh, we're gonna we're planning to get the wedding done summer of 2026. So if you're in our inner circle, you're definitely gonna be receiving an invite. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited. It was we went exactly how I wanted it to. She did not see it coming at all. And Jen is the type of person that sees everything coming. So we didn't see it coming. <laughs> so I was, very, I was very excited. I was very excited um, that that went well. And then the dog is doing well. Cody, named after Commander Cody. Um, we've been uh, we, we've got him potty trained now, so that's really really good. Um, we haven't been having any accidents in the house. Um, but we are having some issues with just puppy mischief, which is, you know, that's the usual tore up a couple pair of Jen's shoes. It is what it is. Dang. Yeah. That's yeah. He just says, we call it the witching hour. It's like this one hour in the <laughs> evening after he comes back. So we've been taking him on like really long walks after dinner to like gas him out. So he'll just go to sleep for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he's a good boy. He does really good, especially for his age. He's really well behaved. So if you know the usual puppy mischief is all I have to deal with, I'll happily deal with it. Yeah, we were warning Tommy. Uh, Jacob and I had a dog named Moonshine, and when we would leave for really extended periods of time, she knew that we loved our Star Wars figures. So she would just pick one. She would just snatch one unsuspecting Star Wars figure that we may have accidentally left laying around and just chew it. And then one time we left them alone and then we came back to the house to grab something really quick and then went away later. So she got two stars action figures to show us a lesson. So <laughs> praying that you don't receive the same fate as you were telling me before the show, Cody doesn't go upstairs near your collection. So just don't let it near it. Don't, if it knows you love it, it will attack it. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep periodically mu uh, muting myself because now they're weed whacking. Uh, they got done with the mower. Now they got a weed whack. So I don't know. Again, yes. they've only ever done this in the morning. It's really very angering to me, actually, that the one time we decide to record um, is when they decide to do this. That's fine. I am the main character. Everything is about me. Um, so we have some uh, Star Wars news and rumors. So yes. the big thing in gaming news recently has been... Uh, the Star Wars Hunters out of the blue getting shown off a lot recently. So I'll pop that up. Wabam. Right off StarWars.com. And here it is. Uh, Wars finally. Hunters. Jackson, what are your thoughts? We got the official gameplay trailer. Apparently this Mandalorian guy, uh, people have been waiting for him to show up like forever. I was going to say that was not an original character that was showed off during the launch because I remember following the trailers with Jacob, but I did not know that was even going to be a thing. Yeah. But I'm excited. It looks like just like a fun like mobile game to like just kind of like waste your time like here and there and just play. But it's right. nothing. It's not. I am a little bit annoyed when anything game related is showed off for Star Wars. The immediate response is, where is Battlefront 3? Where is Battlefront? This over Battlefront? 
this isn't the studio that also makes Battlefront like at all. This is a completely different company that just wanted to make something fun. And I think it's cute. You have people from all over the saga. You have all the, um, you got the prequels, the OT, and even the sequels even represented, which is just really cool. So I can't complain about that. And again, it's not like this game is supposed to have like the biggest lore-based events that we've seen yet. Right, exactly. And on top of that too, it's it's a mobile game. It's not like a full yeah. AAA console release. This is a small game. And um, I really don't... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to play it all that much, but I definitely will check it out because it does look like a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it looks really neat. I, is it out already, I thought? Uh, June 4th. I think it's the same day as uh, Acolyte. Okay, okay, I'll probably yeah. try it out for sure. I mean, it looks fun, but... Yeah, arriving June 4th for Android, iOS, and Switch. Dang. For Switch would kind of be fun. I'll probably get it on a switch then to be honest with you. Yeah, you can use the uh the Joy Cons on that. That'll be fun to play. Yeah, instead of the awful phone controls for games. <laughs> it's not like playing Call of Duty Mobile. Or I mean, if you're on your phone, if you have a Bluetooth controller, you can hook it up to that. Right, right. Um, and then so we have one other thing here which is in our news and rumors. And that is a bunch of news regarding the Acolyte series. Um, I don't know about what's, what's your hype level on this now? I'm honestly, the more trailers come out and the more they get shown about it, I'm really excited for it now. I feel like yeah. maybe even they felt that the first trailer that they put out wasn't really like captivating people too well. And so now right. I feel like the trailers are a little bit more about the story. And I feel like that's what I always wanted too. Is like, okay, we know when this is supposed to be, but what's really like the story beats kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it typically does look like the same formula where it's only going to be the first few episodes shown, which I'm, which I would be okay with. I don't want the whole show spoiled for me, but it looks really, really cool. I'm excited. I was really hyped because as of the day that we're recording this on the 29th, they're doing a special partnership with Fandango at participating movie theaters. You can see the Acolyte a day early, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really... Uh, Hybrid, I think, got one for... He RSVP'd for himself and me. Um, I don't okay. know, because I think it was only maximum two per person, which makes sense. Um, yeah. So I, we'll see if we even get them, if we even got it in time. Uh, but if we can make it, we'll, I'll definitely go down there with him because I won't lie. When that first trailer dropped, I was I was not really excited or like you know yeah. disappointed about the show. I didn't really have an opinion. But as they've marketed the show more and more, I've been really ramping up my hype for it. Um, they've done a better job marketing this show, I think, than most other Star Wars series as of late. Yeah, and the only thing that worries me about that is I kind of feel like historically, if something is extremely overmarketed, that only means it's bound to fail. Like, you know, when you go to the movie theater and then you get the commercial that's like, everything looks better on IMAX. And it's like the little phone screen, like showing a bit of like the movie. Like, yeah, and like it expands. Maya and I have a theory that uh, if a if that your movie is in that trailer, it's trash and you're only bound to fail. And so that's the way that I felt like with Furiosa for Mad Max, because I was watching it. I had so many people say like, that's going to be the movie of the year. That's going to be the best movie ever. And Jacob saw it and a bunch of other people I know saw it and were like, it was mid. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. hoping that it's good. Oh yeah. I unfortunately kind of feel like now for us as positive Star Wars content creators, we're stuck in an uphill battle of trying to just get away from like a lot of the negativity that surrounded the acolyte and just I the agree. show in general. Yeah, I think we've I think we've been fighting an uphill battle with the Star Wars fandom anyway when it comes to yeah. positive press for these shows. But I think specifically with the acolyte, I mean, there was the whole thing like I don't know why there was such a smear campaign on this show. I mean, obviously a lot of people were disappointed with um with uh, Leslie Headland as the pick for the show because of 
um, her being Harvey Weinstein's assistant. I, I really just want, I want the show to succeed because I also want to just rub it in the faces of all the people that are like smear campaigning the show and being like, haha, you guys said this was trash and it's really good. Oh yeah. That's how I felt about Ahsoka. Cause all these people mm-hmm. are trying to be like, Star Wars is so dead. I'm like, Ahsoka was the number two show on IMDb out of every other show released. I was like, you can take that with your Star Wars is dead bullshit. But Ahsoka's so mid, Ahsoka's so mid. I'm like, dude, it, it really is annoying at this point. Um, I think I forget who I was talking to the other day. Uh, it might have been um Hunter and maybe like Cook or something on Xbox um yeah. a couple of days ago. But I was we were basically having the conversation of like, I wish I could just talk to anyone about Star Wars and not have the immediate topic of conversation go to what what my opinion is on the new media because it's like yes. most of the times when someone asks you that they're not even really asking you they're just like yeah. asking you the question with their answer to the question preloaded so like yeah. oh hey oh well, what'd you think of the new trilogy what'd you think of ahsoka oh well, I, you know i really liked it i thought it was good oh it was trash it was tra-. like dude can we talk about anything else that has to do with the franchise Literally. Literally, it just, literally. <laughs> and the part that kills me on this too, and I wish I could just like, I don't know, I've kind of been on a hill about it and I've been constantly going on Star Wars posts to like troll people about it too. It's just like the concept that when we talk about the accolade that it's woke content in quotations, you, in my opinion, and it's not even a hot take, you're just, you're just racist. Like, there's no point to say that the content is even remotely woke. Nothing in the trailers promotes any progressive, in quotations, agenda that you might think Star Wars does. And you can point at the poster and be like, that's not that's not 1977 Star Wars. That, that's different. This doesn't look like Goobertown, Arkansas. That looks like how a majority of other mainly populated areas in the United States and world look like. Not like your small towns. But... I'm just putting it out there. I'm just going to be blatant and I'm going to say it, but I'm not apologetic about that either. But I feel like that's, that's just, Oh, you go. My bad. <laughs> I, I'm definitely in the same boat. I mean, my biggest thing is uh, I've seen a lot of online discourse around like, Oh, it's such a diverse cast. Where are all the white people at? Where are they? They took out all the white people. I'm like, no dude, they just picked a diverse cast for the show. Like I don't, it's Hollywood. What do you expect? Like, what do you think? They're, Hollywood is progressive. Oh, right? Hollywood is extremely progressive, always has been. What makes you think that the show is going to be bad on the premise that there's not enough white people in the show? And and yeah. I understand, like, you know, I can already see, like, people commenting, being like, oh, that's a straw man argument, you know, like, cite your, cite your people. Bro, go look at any comment section under any Acolyte post yes. from Star Wars social Every media. Every comment section is... The woke acolytes, Star Wars as well. And that's not an exaggeration. It is everywhere. actually it's on their YouTube trailers. It's everything. You know what we could do? What? Since we're on StreamYard, I can just prove our point right now. We oh, we can have... prove our point. Tell me. Do you want to go to Instagram or do you want me to do it? I'm pulling it up right now. I'm pulling it up. We're going to oh, share the screen. Pull it up. In fact, pull up every single Acolyte post that was posted on May 29th, the day of recording, because they posted six different things on social media promoting the acolyte starting with yeah. the rscp thing that was the first all right give me a second here because they're mowing again i don't understand how many times can you mow over the same spot jackson tell me jackson how many times can you mow over the same damn spot anyways all right oh, let us observe top comments no i'm good remember when star wars was good and we don't need to yeah, go through one. like the entire you can probably just That's preview every amazing. post like you're doing right now Y'all really pushing this, huh? Yeah, no shit. It's their new Star Wars show. Yeah. Thank you. Someone Let's saying see. they don't know how it's woke. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Let's go to I I know that uh, there's and I, I'm assuming Disney deletes some of the comments, too, because I know some of them are Probably. just egregious. I mean, there's so much not watching button. Okay, you don't have see the part that actually really did kill me was there was a Star Wars post on their official TikTok and it was one of the I think it was the lady here talking about was one of like Harvey Weinstein's assistants or it yeah. was one of the cast members. I'm not good with names and faces of people in Hollywood, so that's why I don't know. 
But like she was at, so it was when Acolyte was revealed at Celebration. She was like almost in tears talking about it, talking about how like she was really happy and excited because Star Wars is such a diverse amount of content that you can pick and choose what you like and what you yeah. emotionally attach yourself to as well. And then everybody was like, that isn't right because I should be able to enjoy all Star Wars content. And I was like, you're missing the entire point of what it is. Dude, it's it's so here it is right here too. the comments. Barely a white man in sight. Notice what's missing and you know that it's intentional. There it is again. Pure woke shit. Stop the agenda. Yeah, literally every it, single time. It, it proves our point. We're not just straw man arguing this. It's cringe. OK, you're you if oh, you are cringe. posting this kind of comment on on the social media, you know, and I'm, I already know the, the argument back is oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Yeah, dude. Freedom to be freaking cringe, dude. Get it. Get a life. Go touch grass. Like if you don't like it that Ooh. much, then just go find something else to talk about, dude. Yeah, so after, yeah. You yeah. can just not watch the show based on, okay, I watched it and I didn't enjoy it. And we won't get mad. You know, you can strongly dislike pieces of the saga and pieces of content and have a reason for it. I don't care. We're just Star Wars nerds. That's why we like it. But that's And that's part of it, too, is I think a lot of it's coming from people who have a deep connection with the Star Wars they grew up with. And they feel like they have some sort of ownership. Star Wars you grew up with. <laughs> minus your one your one token black character your one token <laughs> black character dude it's 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 frustrating too because people feel like they have ownership over something that they never took part in except for watching on a screen you didn't you didn't you didn't you don't have any ownership over star wars so why do you think that you have a special say in what gets made if you don't like it just get over it. Move on to the next. My my dad always had this really good um because my dad does not like Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. Um mm -hmm. not a fan of either movie. But what my dad always says is, Well, I have the Mandalorian. I may not like these new movies, but I have other bits of Star Wars that I can enjoy. So why would I waste my time talking bad about the stuff I don't like when I'm so enjoying uh, other new content like Mando, mm -hmm. you know, like the older movies that have come out, like the Clone Wars, even just like Bad Batch. There's so much to enjoy. Oh. So why focus on on the conversation on the the one percent that you don't like when everything else you enjoy? Yeah, They're like but, we should make T-shirts that say "I'm a 99 percenter," and the, but be like the 99 percent of people that enjoy the acolyte and the one percent vocal minority that screams and cries about it online. Because I don't doubt, it, I mean, it's always a vocal minority, too, for this stuff. Right. Yeah, I love how uh, this show, because I, I know we were kind of just like free balling this episode, but I, I think it's funny that this episode just kind of impromptu became an acolyte bitch fest where we just like are, <laughs> are just <laughs> like, dude, I'm I'm actually excited for this new show. Um, oh, super. Hyped. I'm really the, the performances from what I've seen look really good. The attention mm -hmm. to detail from what I've seen looks really good. Everything that I've seen, they've marketed it to make me believe that this show is going to be good. So yes. hopefully I'm not, you know, hopefully I'm not disappointed. I don't want to be disappointed. I want to enjoy it just like I've enjoyed yeah. so much other Star Wars content. Exactly. I'm hyped. Wish I could kind of do the theater release. It's not, bro, if you want a movie ticket in Hawaii, it's 20 bucks. I'm not paying 20 that to go. What? Are you serious? Yes, $20. No, but if I go see a movie on base, it's only on the weekends. It's only select amount of movies, but they're $5 instead, which oh is a my plus. Goodness. But the Acolyte isn't good. The Acolyte's supposed to be at the Regal, I'm pretty sure. But I'm not going to pay 20 bucks to go see the Acolyte when it's going to be on Disney Plus for free in like an hour or two after it premieres. You know? Yeah, dude. It premieres on, on the episodes are going to come out on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. our time. So for yes. you, it'll be, what, three? So I'm going to be at work when it comes out. That's the worst part because oh, I'm scheduled oh. to work on Tuesdays till seven or eight at night here. Yeah. So then by the time, I mean, I'll have to get back from work. By the time I get back from work, it's basically midnight where you guys are. 
So I won't be able to immediately talk, but I have to wait to look at anything. So please don't text in the group chat about what you guys are talking about from the show. You can text in the Instagram. We'll just ignore all that while I'm at work. But I'm excited, dude. I'm hyped. Jackson, they spent 15 minutes of the first episode teaching us about pronouns. Star Wars is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my God. God. Anyways, but yeah, needless Maybe, to say, my yeah. hype has been growing the show and i and i really hope did you hear about the twin theory no what's the twin theory so there's a theory going around about the show um i'll just pull up the the screen again here so there is a theory going on that um may is actually a uh, has a dark side twin so, because the whole thing is that, that May is, we know that May is one of Master Soul's prior students, and that she yeah. fell like from the way of the Jedi and like left the mm-hmm. order. But we have only seen Dark Side May with the mask on. We never saw May, and she's wearing a different outfit, um, which you can see on the left here. It's a different outfit yeah. entirely than the version of her that's on the right. So, People are wondering if they're if she has like a twin that's like killing Jedi, so they th- end up thinking it's her when it's really not. Interesting. Now I did not hear that theory on that. I mean, I'm only inclined at the moment to only not believe that because of the way that the trailers are, and it right. feels like it only shows her. But again, Disney trailers are intentionally misleading. We'll have to wait till the show. But no, I mean, like I think that's cool that people are starting to make theories. Like, I mean, I personally theorize that the uh, chick at the very, very bottom of the poster is a night sister to some capacity. Mm. Only because when she was at Celebration, she said that she was a part of, like, a society of, like, women that were really powerful. And that's when everyone was like, ah, it's woke, it's woke. But <laughs> I don't know. As somebody just pointed out as well, it has been hinted from the start that Morgan Elsbeth was a night sister from the way that she talked about her past. And we just, it flew right over most of our heads. That's why when yeah. we're like, she's a night sister. So that's my personal theory for the show going into it. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, one more thing I did want to pull up too was I thought this specific Instagram post was really, really cool. Um, it's like character cards uh, for everyone. Oh, yeah, I did see those. Those are cool, With- dude little bios i thought this was really fun and it kind of gave me like character encyclopedia vibes from when we were oh, kids yeah, nice. i loved reading the character encyclopedias yeah those are really but, neat. yeah man i mean and who knows maybe this chain mail that she's wearing is a uh, beskar chain mail that, that could be has I really hope at some point, maybe if not in this show or somewhere, they talk about like the Jedi Mandalorian Civil War because that is a canon event still. But I would love to see that just as a whole, like a whole thing. Just make it its own show. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. Was it Kelnaka as the Wookiee? Kelnaka, yeah. Goated character. Gonna probably be the best in the show. Just saying it. Better give me a black series of Kelnaka. I'll buy a black series of him. I didn't buy the other ones because I don't know who these people are yet. So I got them. I pre-ordered them. So nice. Nice. hoping they come in soon because I saw that they've been shipped. They're in the U.S. right now. Um, Ooh, that's so I'm cool. hoping that the shipping notifications come in soon. Um, I would love to get my hands on those while the show is out. Nice, nice. But then I can I guess burn them in a dumpster fire. <laughs> In some other kind of briefer uh, Star Wars news, because we don't have to talk about it too much, but um, earlier last week, I had the person pulled up. So if anybody's familiar with the YouTube channel, Jenny Nicholson, she posted a four-hour special called The Spectacular Failure of the Star Wars Hotel. And I watched a fourth of it, because that's, that's a long time. And... She had some really, really good insight, really about like why uh, the Galactic Star Cruiser failed. Some stuff I didn't know is there was plenty of advertisements and promotions that were deleted. So like one of the original promotional trailers, um, I, it was like a skit of like people like running around the ship and like talking about the things to do. But it was so cringe that like, and it got so much hate comments that Disney just deleted it. And really? apparently 
they were advertising at one point like activities to do like on the Galactic Star Cruiser because Chewbacca is like a character that you see there and whatnot. And they advertised that you could like sell Chewbacca to like smugglers and whatnot and like betray him. And people lost their shit over that so much that they deleted the trailer and voided that as an activity that you could do. Because it Yeah, no so kidding. Much hate. No, I'm not kidding. She talked because she really, if you really want to check the video out, go check her on YouTube. It was really, really good. She has bits and pieces of those trailers, and she does like an extreme deep dive into this. And she went to the Galactic Star Cruiser as well. So she talks about her experience there too. So it wasn't just a I saw something online and I ranted about it thing. It's a, I right. was there. And she was one of the first people to go to. I'm my uh, big thing with the gal with the star cruiser was always the price. I, yeah. I think that one yes. of the biggest issues with a, something that was so premier like that was you priced out 95% of your, of your customer base, even for oh. Disney parks. I know Disney parks are mad expensive. And um, I think that it was just it's a real shame that they kind of priced people out by going the way they did with it. And I think if they would have made it cheaper, I think it probably would have been a lot more successful, regardless of whether or not the everything was cringe or, you know, like, I think it probably wouldn't have been as such a flop if you didn't price out so many people. Yeah. And I, especially too from watching her video, and I would kind of agree as well. Because she admitted to only really being like a casual fan of Star Wars and not like too up on everything. And this was also an issue for about two. But you introduced characters and a timeline that people are extremely unfamiliar with. And they don't understand anything. Like, Because I've seen plenty of people on TikTok that were at the Star Cruiser that were like, I don't know who these characters are or where they show up in Star Wars. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, if you want to know, you have to read a book kind of a thing you know and it's like yeah if they marketed it towards specifically the ot like they would have typically done for most products i feel like that would have been a lot better but i can understand why they did it because they're trying to build up the newer like young audience on sequel content so then they have things to do but at the same time it was just a list of activities with minimal break time in between which is fine for kids but not like cool for adults, you know? Right. So I don't know. And I I feel like honestly, Disney, obviously they want to market stuff to what they're making um, because they want to, they want to show that they're proud of what they're making. But Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of specifically star Wars stuff under Disney has been really messy. Like if you look at the way things get released and all the corporate stuff that goes on behind the scenes, there's just, I don't understand what these focus groups like come up with. Like what obviously like the suits are super out of touch with with regular people and and yes. casual fans. Cuz if you if you would have done Batu, I understand putting like Kylo Ren and stormtroopers in there, but do you realize how wild it would have been if they were like, "Hey, it's a new planet, but we have Darth Vader and Boba Fett here?" Like oh, I know they have Boba Fett now, but if they would have been like, "Yeah, we have Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett and Darth Vader at this you know, attraction people would have flocked just to get a picture with Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Now that being said, I think galaxy's edge shows that Disney can market their new stuff. Well, in a, in a theme park setting, Mm -hmm. because the thing with Batu is the immersion comes in the environment, not what you're doing in the environment so much. Whereas with like the hotel, the big thing about it is, Oh, you're staying in the hotel. So therefore the hotel is the attraction. You have to be immersed because you're in an enclosed space. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel like that, that was the downfall as well is, is you're forcing people into the immersion. Like the food has to be immersive because they're yes. in the spaceship. You know, they, when they look out the window, they have to look at outer space. There's so much you have to do. And the characters and everything like that have to go by a script. Whereas they can do a lot more mm-hmm. crowd work in galaxy's edge. Yeah, and I feel like that's a good point, too. But, I mean, not a whole lot else to say. I'll probably watch the rest of the video at some point. But, again, it was it was interesting to see. And I don't know. I mean, maybe Disney might start to try to make some tweaks to Galaxy's Edge. I mean, like, quote-unquote, attendance is low at Disney. But everything that's expensive is 
really like low right now anyway because people are focusing on main things to afford just because of the economy you know but Mm -hmm. maybe it'll see a boost later at some point but i still really want to go jacob is going to be working the parking outside of hollywood studio so he'll be right next to it so that's exciting for him because maybe he can just kind of like casually walk in like grab a blue milk kind of a thing so he'll have access yeah park access whenever he wants that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. I think honestly for me, like Galaxy's Edge is is a lot smarter of an option to do as well. Like as much as I like mm-hmm. the idea of a Star Wars hotel, it just I feel like it's just also not practical regardless of price because you there's only so much you can do to immerse yeah. people into like, oh, I'm in Star Wars, you know, because you're in Star Wars – but then you look over and there's a guy in, in cargo shorts and, and a Hawaiian shirt, you know? Yeah, so literally. it's, there's only, but I feel like in galaxy's edge, it's easier to get lost in it because the entire environment, there's star Wars characters walking past you, talking to you. There's the, all mm-hmm. the workers there are village people on Batu, So it's yeah. a lot easier to get into it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's all I got on that, at least. Did you have any other news or we just leave it up for open discussion as the topic down below suggests? Dude, I don't know. I I feel like I don't have much to say on on the um, Star Cruiser because, I one, I didn't finish the video either, so I didn't like yeah. get to get into Neither all the points. Right. Yeah, um, so I don't... I don't feel like there's much else for me to say about it because I feel like – haven't we also talked – I think you might not have been here, but I think Jacob and I also one time did briefly talk about Star Cruiser. Um, Maybe you did, yeah. Yeah, but it was – yeah, it's just too expensive, man. Like I would never – I would never choose that over Galaxy's Edge. I feel like if it was part mm-hmm. of Galaxy's Edge, then I would be like much more inclined to, oh, that hotel is part of this bigger attraction. I can go into mm-hmm. either of them. Then I might be more into it. Um, yeah. Speaking of the theme parks, though, I feel like it would be super cool if they revamped Galaxy's Edge and like expanded it to add more planets. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. I don't know, especially at some of the locations. I feel like space has always been the biggest issue. How much can they work mm-hmm. with in the park? But I mean, other planets wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I feel like for some people or those who really just go constantly, it just needs like more things to do because it's only got two rides and one of them you can't really ride unless you get a special pass to do it. So right. Jacob Jacob actually did get to ride it, but just like really late because he almost didn't get on twice. But still, like for his first time being there, he almost didn't get to go on the big special ride. Yeah. But here's actually, if you are really interested in... Uh, there's a video that I watched. It's like a couple hours long. It was all about like the history of like fast passes at Disney. And it's, it explains from like when Disney opens to like now how fast passes work, how it works in the system. And then the person even creates like a scenario. It says, what if you have X amount of people and they enter the park this day and there's these five popular attractions and these amount of people want to go. And he shows like the math, but then in the end he reveals it isn't a hypothetical situation. It's animal kingdom and he just worked off real numbers that were there to prove that you can't funnel as many regular people who enter the park and who want to fast pass in at the same time. And how the system wow. is extremely cool. But it was like, what? Like watching the video. It was really, really cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you'll have to send me that. Uh, um, I'm actually just going to find it right now. It is by, I watch him all the time on YouTube. Okay, it's called Defunct Land, Disney Fast Pass, A Completed History. Oh, oh it's only 142 minutes long. But I know that does, channel. Like, okay. He does really cool videos about, like, just the history of Disney. I don't know how this dude, like, can stand to do all these deep dives consistently about stuff, but it's very well-made professional content, though. Like, should yeah, Disney definitely have to do, like, other scale, like, amusement parks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think i watched one of his videos once yeah really really cool stuff so yeah just a cool hypothetical too yeah honestly for me i feel like if they did a new like if they may expanded galaxy's edge to other planets i would love to see different stuff from different eras so like 
for one, I think it'd be really cool if they put like Tatooine. You did the Mos Eisley Cantina. You just, yeah. oh, I'm on Mos Eisley. And then I can talk to characters like, you know, Sand Troopers come up to me and I can talk to Han and Chewie and, you know, Greedo and Jabba. And then you would go to maybe uh-huh. like Navarro from Mandalorian. You could talk to Grief Karga, the Mandalorian, Grogu, you know, characters that you see on Navarro. Uh, the armor, you. you know, I feel like that would be cool. What's that? Said you could go to Tatooine and talk to all the useless cantina aliens that men, children just want to cry and complain about. <laughs> Which I did. Oh, did, you, did you see all the stuff going on with the cantina? I didn't. I saw that you were on Solid Digest's show yesterday. Didn't get to catch it. Time zone difference. Time zone, brother. But no, what else? Because I saw that it was revealed in an advertisement on accident. And then Hasbro... I was surprised they didn't make a statement or be like, "Uh uh-oh, guys, you might know what it is. We'll show it off to you later. They just act like, oh, they act like Stevie Wonder playing the keyboard. They ain't got a clue where anything is when they're revealing stuff. So, It was revealed to me in a dream, actually. (laughs) All the... All the so here, let me pull up Cantina Haslab on Instagram because there was a leak. Um, yes. showing up, and I think, I think the leak is fake, dude. Are you serious? Like, I think that the details for the leak are fake, really? Yeah, because okay, here it is. Um, here's the picture from the Star Wars toy collector. We're pulling up Yak Faces page here. Okay. I was going to say, what about Yak Face's news post today about the HasLab? Yeah, so I will um, pull that up as well. Um, Okay, okay. So if you check this out, if you zoom in close, it says that the base playset is $400. Or you can choose to get the deluxe playset for $500. And then there was another post I saw, and I don't, for some reason I can't find it now, but there was another image that someone posted, and there's like a typo in it, which like makes me think it's fake. Um, maybe if I search HasLab Cantina like I did yesterday. Um, here we go. Show us your search history. It's our account, so hopefully it's nothing bad. <laughs> oh no, brother, don't show the search history. Don't show the search history. <laughs> Goth GF picks. Um, yeah, I can't find it now, but there was another image that must have gotten taken down where they were talking about how like there's the deluxe version has eight figures, and then the base version only has four figures. And yeah, hmm. and then you get you get more of the building if you got the deluxe version. You get less that of the building. Make but sense though. Yeah, but there was a typo where they put the word "will" instead of "with," and it also wasn't in the usual font that they use on this website. So I think it's fake. Wow, that would honestly be really, really hilarious if they go to reveal it and it isn't the Cantina playset and. All these people lose their shit about it too, dude. That would be so funny. The prophet would well, have been wrong. He would have been crucified. <laughs> it is definitely the cantina because Yakface posted this today. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's like a little, what'd you call it? A Caesar cipher? It's a Caesar style cipher. Lucanus has what it says. Yeah, it says, be sure to drink your Oval Dean. <laughs> Christmas story reference. Yeah, it says uh, HasLab TVC Cantina includes three all new figures and three unlockable figure tiers. Okay. It, that makes sense too, you know. But. Which I don't know what they would do for characters because you got to do the bartender is like a base yeah. one. And then I don't know what two aliens they would add like to make you want to get it. What are aliens? There's no way they're going to do Luke. No, dude, they're gonna do Luke. Who are you saying? <laughs> Wait, if I I would I would not back it if they were like, yo, we're gonna put Luke and Han in there. I'm not gonna back it anyway, dude. I don't want it. You don't want to buy one and then piece it out overpriced to TVC collectors, and then make money. 
No, not playing, no, not playing a long game. This is a smart think idea. Think about it. You know, think about it's it. not even something at that point because it's simply you didn't buy it and you missed out, and now you're paying the collector price for it. Because <laughs> think about it this way: there's going to be people yeah. who want two of each figure because they want one yes. to keep on card and one to open for their playset. Yeah, so if I sell you for fifty dollars a piece, you know there's going to be someone that snatches that up right away. For just the figures, and then I sell the playset for like two hundred dollars. Boom! I just made a bunch of money. That's true, jeez, dude. Just saying, just saying. I that will say fun. though, I I kind of Don't wish that it came with more ideas. figures. I kind of wish it came with more figures though, because it's a playset. Yeah, I mean, I do. I will agree that I feel like six figures potentially in total, three of which being that have to be tiers is a little bit lackluster for a play set. Again, a play set that's supposed to like, it isn't like the Razor Crest where it should only come with the Mandalorian and Grogu because those are the only characters that use Razor Crest that we know of so far. It's like, what's the point? I mean, maybe these diehard TVC people have a billion other aliens laying around. Maybe there's aliens you can pick up for cheap. Maybe there's things that you can use for reuse or just random OT characters, and that's what they're banking off these people doing. God knows, dude. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's not up for debate. I feel like it's just whatever people feel like doing. Yeah, and again, I'm I'm not buying it because I'm like, don't buy the TVC Haslab. I'm I don't care about the Cantina. I just simply that is not something I would like to collect. That's not something I do collect. So the product itself is probably going to be fine. So. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to see when it comes out again. I want to see the full solicitation. I don't want to see just yeah. one leaked image of one angle of the playset. Apparently, it comes with lights and sounds, which could be really cool to see the bar light that up and cool. that stuff, you know, and have all the booths have like lighting and stuff. That to me would really increase the value of it. That would justify the price too, because I kind of feel like $400 for pieces of plastic that have already come out in the Black Series scale. You can seriously just 3D print. It's like, uh, but again, it's it's yeah. an official Hasbro item, so people are going to buy it. Got to fix that. Yeah, and and the guys on Starlight Digest said the same thing that you just said about the 3D printing. They were like, "Well, yeah. I have a 3D printer. What's stopping me from making this when someone already has a file made for it and yeah. just printing it out, painting it, and then I already have it, and it costs me just the material." Uh, the cost of the materials I use to make it rather than all the money. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. It's, I feel like it's a horse of peace, you know, it's like, I don't and have a 3d printer. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route. Yeah. But also what's stopping people from when it releases, just scanning it in CAD and making an exact replica of, cause you can make mm -hmm. something close to what it is, but someone could legit scan that and make remake the entire thing. Definitely. So, yeah, only time will tell. We'll have to see. I want to see more pictures because I don't want to just – I feel like a lot of people have already made up their minds just from the price. It really has to knock our socks yeah. off for it to be worth 400 bucks because I really thought it was going to be at most 350 I did agree too because we were speculating before on the show that you know the Haslab does a thing where you get a really expensive one and then you get a cheaper mm -hmm. one to kind of like easing out like what's going on. I still kind of feel like four hundred dollars is a little bit much for a play set. Yeah, but I agree. Again, if it has lights and sounds and other features, I feel like that would start to justify the price point a little more. But even that, I'm like, ooh, I'm like, brother, ooh, because <laughs> again, like with the ghost, it's like, yeah, the ghost is five hundred bucks, but it's two feet by three feet. It is yeah. massive. And when Jacob made that table. And I yes. saw kind of like, oh, that's a three foot by three foot table. Like just how big, the so much space you need for that thing. I was like, okay, now I can understand why that was 500 bucks. I don't know where I'm going to put mine. That's the worst part. <laughs> Maybe I can, I want to mount my blaster vertically on the wall here next to my bed. I probably might get away with that. I have no idea where I'm going to put the ghost. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's why I'm making, that's why I'm, Jacob and I did the coffee table idea because it's like, yeah. You know, and then it's like you can display it, but it's, it's also serves another purpose. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I mean, and I'll get to that when I get it for her home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll just have to buy all the Lothal grass for it and go from there. But, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. I got nothing else on that. No, I mean, neither on the canteen. It was good to hear the update on that, though, because, again, sorry I missed the show. I re- do not. I do not want... Hunter wants sandy feet pics. What does that mean? I guess we'll find out next time if you're Double in the Discord. Double entendre, brother. Double entendre, brother. No, <laughs> but um, I'm actually going to the beach later, too, so that's a little bit funny. Ooh, exciting. But, yeah, I have... I've met a few decently like interested star wars people here i haven't seen a whole crowd yet again i need to meet the 501st guys they all seem really really into it so hyped for that i just i hate using forums so much i can't stand it i'm glad that the clone trooper detachment upgraded and made a discord but i can't stand forums it is not from my time so yeah well, uh, I believe the witching hour is upon us for the dog. I've I've been sent a text to assist with the dog. So that is okay. Uh, I have nothing else for the show this week. What's Next that? Next week we're going to talk about acolyte. Yes, I'm so excited. Let's go. Super, super hyped. I can't believe it's already here. So then we can spend seven weeks talking about another new show. Very yeah. excited. Ah uh, ha ha. Ha, ha, ha. But I do have yeah, my Jack Wednesday is out. Off for recording. So as long as Tommy and Jacob can make Wednesdays work, I will be able to record. I can do it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You want to take us out? All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching this episode of the 1313 Podcast with me and Tommy. If you want to hear us talk about Star Wars so much more than we already have on today's episode, please consider joining our Discord. We do have social media. We work on an Instagram and sometimes an X because we don't really care for X. We have a Twitch that we will occasionally stream on. Uh, If you would like to help support our channel financially, you can also find us on Patreon. And we do channel memberships that are only a dollar meaning get previews of the newest episodes before they are out and bloopers when we finally get back to bloopers or any other extreme content. But by the merch, by the merch, by the merch, that's all I got. Have a good Goodbye, rest of everybody. Week, everybody. Take care. Acolyte next week. Acolyte next week. Woo! Let's go. Hey, this is Vanessa Marshall. I play Harrison Dula on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the 1313 Podcast. Hey. Da 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 da